Hello, Christian. I finally got a whiteboard. And there's a lot of stuff on here, but I I, I want I just guys, hello. I want I want you to bear with me, all right? Cuz <laughs> I thought I thought I was wrong, okay? And I was okay with it. I was halfway there, okay? Uh hold on. I thought I was wrong. But you saw the last conversation that we were having together that my phone went off, which is honestly, that was part of what I was trying to change. I was trying to get to be more professional. I was trying to be a better professional. And so what I did was I forgot to mute my phone like an idiot. And I'm sorry uh, to Skybound, especially because I know, uh, well, I'm sorry. And so I got the text, okay? And I was looking at it. And I thought that it's impossible, okay? Because honestly, the biggest thing for me, the biggest time was K, right? It's always been about Christian Harloff. He's the chairman, he's the champion, he's the king, he's wearing the crown, okay? But that's too easy. Why? Why would he sabotage his own thing, right? Why would he kill the MTS? Because he knows I am the MTS, just like everyone else does. So him trying to kill Drew made no sense to me, okay? None whatsoever. So what did I do? What did I do? I dug, right? I dug, I dug, and I dug, and I dug, and I found. I found something. I really, really found something. Now, I'm not going to make the same mistake I did last time because last time I didn't know what I was on to. And I was too uh, careless with speaking about it. But now I know. And I know exactly where I'm going to take care of it. <laughs> because you know what? You took the whole year to laugh at Drew. Well, guess what? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the movie trivia showdown. The semifinals are here in the team's tournament division. I'm Christian Harloff, joined, as always, by Mark Baby Caratellis. Mark, what a battle and what a story we have on our hands today in the team semifinals here. The founding fathers, former champs, against final exam, Polo Yama and Lon Harris. That's right, Christian. Those two youths that you just mentioned, well, one is an up-and-comer. The other one is kind of down and out, but maybe getting the life back together somewhat. They have to team up today as they have all tournament long and possibly play the best they ever have as individuals or collectively because, like you said, on the other end of the game today, two old war horses that are somehow still in this silly little trivia experiment Dan Merle, John Roca, the names alone put a shudder into the heart of anyone that is brave enough to sit across the desk, or in this case, in the virtual realm, and look them in the eye and say, I know more about movie trivia than you. Legends. I mean, absolute legends. Uh, you have the movie trivia showdown champion of the world. Uh, Dan Merle is having a hell of a year. He's defended his singles championship twice. He was the team's champion uh, with John Roca, by the way, who was also, strangely enough, having a good year as far as gameplay goes. As far as overall, he, he has one victory this season over all the matches that he's had. And that one victory comes over Paul Oyama, who also has a victory, championship victory over last year against who? Dan Merle. So there is a big story there. The other story is, what did Lon Harris steal on his way here today? Uh, we don't know. Hopefully not that dog. Hopefully that dog, Taco, is in much better care yeah. than it was the last time we saw Taco because it was I, apparently at its place and then Lon barred the kid. Look, we have to ask Lon about that, but we may not get a straight answer from Lon. Great at answering movie trivia questions. A little dodgy when it comes to his personal life, but I think we might have a war of words between managers. So maybe we get some info from either Winston Marshall or Bobby Gucci about what's going on with their teams. It's so interesting to get into the psyche behind a big event like this. The winner takes on the odd couple for all the marbles in this tournament, and it's going to be hell to get there.
Oh, and it's so much more than just that. Because of what is happening now, the Finstock Exchange is on their last leg. They they win here today, and if they can win the whole tournament with the Founding Fathers, and it's a very good chance that they could do that with you know the legends that Dan and John are. But if they don't win here today, it's over for the Finstock Exchange as far as winning the Faction Championship. Of course, Dan Merle has his big match against Adam Collins where he can still pick up a, a victory and some points. But if they want to win the whole thing and catch corruption, they've got to win every single match from here on out in order to do so. Swag still has a shot. Swag has two championship matches already in the Spectacular. Can they do it here? It'll hurt them if they lose. It'll hurt tremendously. But Winston and Finstock have been going at it, but now they're playing catch up with corruption. Both of them need the win here today. It's going to be a big, big matchup, and there was some verbiage traded before we went to air, so let's take a look at that package put together, as always, by the one, the only, the legendary, the mythologically fantastic Nerd Chronic. Take it away. You know, it's nice to start out on a fresh foot in a new tournament, in a new league, in a new sport, in a new year with my new hat. So, you know, I'm, I feel like we're revitalized. We are up against the founding fathers. Uh, I have not seen Hamilton, but I don't think it's eligible for the Schmodown. Ooh, would you like to go to the theater? I'm one of the founding fathers. I'm in Hamilton. And dancing to the next I'm not dreaming or fantasizing about anything. To me, it's about whatever's in front of me. And then when I wake up one day and we've done it, if we've done it, I'm going to wake up ready to go. It's spectacular. So Paul Oyama and uh, Lon Harris are no joke. So it's going to be a heck of a match. Pop quiz hot shot. You're the team standing in mine and John Roca's way to get to the finals. What do you do? You lose this game. We are on a quest to win, W-I-N, win. That's a spelling test for you, final exam. Hello, Gucci. We are a bunch of young, educated, talented, smote out competitors, and we plan to Hurt. You could nip the swag run in the bud here. So uh, how crucial is it? Uh, yeah, but to take those guys out for sure, it'd be fantastic. We, we know we belong on top. And uh, I still believe it. And I think most of the FinStack Exchange still believes it, that we will be on top. Look, we're going to see Paul Yama, Dan Merle, John Roca. All singles champions. All singles champions, right? And um, and Lon's no slouch. Not, not too worried. Uh, I doubt there's going to be too many 1776 questions or young Mr. Lincoln. He was a he was a founding father. Right? He was one of those guys. The last time I saw Paulo Yama in regular competition, he was walking away with my belt on his shoulder. And the last time I saw Lon Harris, he was asking me for a buck outside of the Home Depot. Either way, neither one of them is going to get what they want. We are on a quest to do to Shazam at this year's Spectacular what we did to Shazam at last year's Spectacular because John knows and I know where the Founding Fathers deserve to be, and that is at the top. Now, when you look at that, you got to always say, I mean, John Roca cuts some of the best promos that we've ever seen by any competitor. He has set the way to do that. Okay. And there is a lot of history here. And what you also saw inside of that was the fact that how much John and Dan, how much respect they have for not only just final exam, but for Paul Oyama in particular. They both played him. Paul has changed tremendously from what he was as far as attitude and the way he respects the game, the way he respects Dan and John. So there's not a lot of, like, you don't see, it wasn't like when John, excuse me, when Dan and Paul played each other last year, right? It was more of this, you see Paul in the way he looks at these guys who set the way before him because he strives to be where they are today as far as stature. 
Yeah, right, but anybody looking for some jabs back and forth before this match actually begins, I think you're going to be happy with the two managers that we're about to bring into yep. the stream right now, and that would be Winston Marshall of Team Swag, excuse me, Finals Proctor. Wow, that's a nice title. And by Gucci, I'm not going to say what that name is. Fair. All right. So, yeah, all right. Well, listen, we I, all... What did you say? I you, you might hey, what's up? Your microphone's amazing today, Gucci. It's great. Yeah. No, it's what's, terrible. Uh, what's up, Gucci? How are you doing? I'll get it better. I, I got a new studio. It's great. You invested well. So uh, let, let's let's start here with with Winston. Winston, mm -hmm. this is a this is a big match here for Swag because obviously you've got those two big title matches coming up at Spectacular right around the corner here. But this match here with Final Exam, they came very close. They lost to Shazam in that number one contender match. Then they won big TKO over Paul and Tom. They look like they're playing very well together. How big of a victory and what kind of statement are you looking to make here today against the Founding Fathers, the former champs? I mean, you saw it in the promo right there. Uh, I'll make it very clear. It's time for the new Founding Fathers to come in. I just watched the whole Purge series, all right? It's time to do that. I have nothing but respect for John and Dan. They are the, they are the goats of this entire thing. Forget just the league of all of the Schmodown. They are the two best to have ever done it. But it's a new time now. And it's funny, man, because like I said, and I said this before, I got nothing but respect for Gucci, man. Like that's, I, I took a little bit from each manager coming into this and to see how to do it. And what I got specifically from Gucci was the attitude. I already had it in me, but I got to see what I got to do, right? Well. It's time to put Grandpa out to pasture. That's all I'm saying, Gooch. I love you, buddy, but it's time. That's fair. All right, well, that's yeah, fair. Gucci, uh, we hear that Winston has been binging the Purge movies. I know you haven't seen any film not named Rambo, but when you think of the Purge, maybe you think about the season you're having thus far where it, you left some wins on the table there. You weren't able to close. And so what would a big victory here today getting you into the finals mean for your faction and for how the public may see it? I mean, look, it keeps us alive. I mean, that's what we're doing. I mean, we're treading water right now. Uh, this is either we're gonna jump on the door in Titanic, the girl's gonna let us on, or we're gonna float and die like Jack. You know what I mean? I, I, this is what it is at this point. Um, there's no if fans about it. If fans or butts about it. Uh, we just can't get caught watching the paint dry. And uh, let's, let's hope that doesn't happen. We've had that happen a lot this year and we can't have it happen today. If we want to be relevant in the spectacular, uh, this, this, we need to win here. That's the bottom line. Scary. All right. Well, listen, you, you, you both, a lot on the line, as you said, both Swag and Finstock Exchange, whoever wins this here has a better shot at catching corruption. Good luck to you, gentlemen, and we'll, uh, we'll see you in a moment. Gucci, I'm almost done grading your final exam here. You got an F, buddy, just to let you oh, know. Oh, that's, that's pure. I knew that. Yeah, yeah it's pretty... Uh, Predictable there. Christian, I, I might have to challenge what Gucci just said. I, I don't believe it wasn't a case of uh, Rose not letting Jack on the door. I think there just wasn't enough room, and Jack well knew that. Thus, I think he just was like, you know what? I'll go chill in the ocean. You will go live a happy life, probably with Billy Zane. I like that you did that with me because it means less talking from him. All right. Are you ready to get going? Yeah, I did you a favor already, so do me one and kick this baby off. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Introducing first, representing Swag, with a record of four wins, one defeat, and three knockouts, the delinquent, Lord Harris, and the former, Movie trivia showdown, champion of the world, prime time. Paul Oyama, final exam. Paul Oyama, Lon Harris. Paul, let's start with you. You're having a pretty good year this year. You're, I mean, you had teams. Now I know, I know how you are, and I know that you know. And if you don't win every match to you, it's not a great year. But you're having really good year you did well in singles you're doing great in teams here four wins one correction beforehand uh giving myself a little page out of adam collins it wasn't a number one contender match but it was close you guys got close as you were going to face you did go up against shazam who are now of course the champions so going into this match here and going up because your your dreams for the for championships are still on the table 
going up against Dan Merle and John Roca, two guys that you have gone up against before. How are you feeling right now? Uh, well, this is a, a tough test. This is iron sharpens iron. You know, these guys, they laid the foundation for this league. And, and I just think it's time for us to build upon that and hopefully build beyond that. Yeah, Lon, when Spaceball 1 goes to plat, it means they've hit ludicrous speed. When you don that flannel, what does that mean for your opponents? Does this mean that Lon Harris is no longer a delinquent, that he's locked in and ready to go for this contest here today? Uh, it really just means that I haven't watched this in a while. So, you know, like, look out. Like, stay where you are. You don't want to get within, you know, there's like six feet of social distancing. So this flannel, I, I recommend 12 to 15 feet. Okay, Lon, we're going to keep the shot on you just for a sec. Uh, can you just uh, move to your right a little bit? Uh, your other right, son. Oh, your oh, other oh, right. Oh, dear oh, God, okay. Christian. Christian, the dog is still in his stead, and that yeah. concerns me. It's like Baby Yoda. Um, he, he lives here. I'm just I'm just kind of chilling. It's, his, well, it's I, his place. I do have to ask you this, Lon, because I, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is the first time you've ever faced off against your former co-worker in Dangerous Dan Merle. Is that accurate? Wait, wait. Dan is on the Founding Fathers? He is. He is on the Founding Fathers. They're former champions, and, and he has why, actually... Why is, this the first, why is this the first I've heard about it? That's my only question. Fair enough. All right. And uh, any other words here? Uh, you know, you know. This is. We'll maybe wait until afterwards too. But is what's the what is the pure motivation here um, for you, Paul? Is it to get to that championship match? Is it to get a win for Swag? Is it redemption against John Roca? Is it another win against Dan Merle? Is it all of that stuff uh, kind of wrapped into one package? I think it's that stuff, but it's also respect, and that's twofold. It's respect for our opponents, and I respect them enough to want to give them as good a game as possible, and earning respect for us and for our manager in this league. And those are the, the keys for us, I think, today. All right. Paul Oyama, Lon Harris, we'll see you guys in just a moment. Good luck to you, gentlemen. All right, so we're moving uh, final exam. They await their opponents. And their opponents representing the Finstock exchange with a record of six wins three defeats and four knockouts they are the former movie trivia schmodown team champions of the world the outlaw john roca and the reigning movie trivia schmodown champion of the world Dangerous Dan Murrow, the Founding Fathers! John Roca, Dan Murrow have arrived. Champ, let's start here with you. I have to ask you this question. When you were, when you guys lost the championship, you said this ends at Spectacular. Do you stand by that? Is that the case? Is that what's driving you guys here today? course it's driving us today i mean obviously at that time we would have loved to get some revenge against corruption at spectacular that's apparently not going to be what happens but that still doesn't mean that uh, john and i aim for every single season we play together to be ending at spectacular because if your season's not ending at spectacular that means that you've fallen somewhere by the wayside as the season's gone on so yes that 100 percent means this ends at spectacular Hey, uh, Dan, like your uh, like your bobblehead there. It's like a uh, thank you. Look at yeah. that. Anyway, let's uh, let's get over to the outlaw John Roca, a man of many traits. He's a cowboy sponsored by Adidas. But John, when you look at the matchup today, sure, I know you want to get a win for the team, get to yeah. the finals, get to the spectacular. But what would a well done performance by John Roca do for the outlaws' reputation today? Well, moral victories are useless to me at this stage of my career. So for me, this is about victories in the game, victories to get to a title, to put another belt on my shoulder or around my waist and to help my brother and I become champions again. So moral victories were nice against Ethan. Moral victories were nice against corruption. I didn't take a moral victory against that TKO from Collins, but I did take a great victory over Christian Harloff in that Rocky exhibition match. So I like the taste of victory in my mouth. Moral victories do nothing for me. I've had enough of those. It's the titles that matter now, especially as Dan and I, or at least I am, in the twilight of my Schmodown career. It's about getting those belts one more time 
to cement the legacy, put myself back up on Mount Rushmore. Because I'm already hearing people wanting to take me off and put Kalinowski on there. So it's always about respect. People don't ever give me the respect I'm due in this game fully. And I have to keep winning matches to remind people to give me that respect. And this is another opportunity against two incredible players in Lon Harris and especially the former champ himself, Paul Oyama, a man I respect greatly, not only for his knowledge, but for who he is as a person. Well, to quote the great Apollo Creed, I have no comment. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so with the Founding Fathers here, good luck to you both. Of course, winners here go to the finals to play the odd couple. And we are now going to bring in Mr. Lon Harris and Paul Oyama. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, our competitors have arrived. They are ready to go. Mark, what are the rules of round number one? The rules of the match. All dogs must be returned to their rightful owners by the conclusion of said contest. In round number one, each competitor is going to hear eight questions because these questions are asked to the field. Yes, it's a team's match, but round number one is an individual exercise of movie trivia schmodown know-how. As soon as the question is asked, each competitor has 15 seconds to write down their best attempt at an answer with whatever writing utensil they prefer on whatever writing surface they have provided for themselves. We don't mail you that kind of thing. Once we ask you by name, please reveal your attempt at an answer. You get a point if it's right. No penalty for missing a question. No stealing, at least not in round number one. Wink, wink. Each team has three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. Name for famed former screen junkie, JTE. You also each have one challenge to be used at any point throughout the three-round match. You may initiate the challenge. We'll bring your manager in, and they will ultimately confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. Christian, it looks like Taco's starting to think about escaping, but we're not there yet. Got All right, to we, go. we asked Dan Merle, are you ready? I am so ready. Paul Oyama, are you ready? Set your clocks, let's do this. John Rocco, are you ready? Let's go. And Lon Harris? I'm ready, Taco's ready, let's do it. Then let's get ready to Schmodown. All right, question number one. The realm of action adventure. Who plays Michaelia Barnes in the Transformers franchise? All right. Christian, look at those bookshelves behind Dan and John. Do you think they put them up themselves? Or do you think they hired professional help? I don't want to offend anybody. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with Dan Merle. We put them up ourselves. Uh, Megan Fox. Yes, Paul Oyama. You're lime green jello and you can't even admit it to yourself. Megan Fox. Yes, Outlaw John Roca. Uh, I built everything from scratch. Megan Fox. And Lon Harris. I also had Megan Fox. High game, ladies and gentlemen. Question number two. All right, got a lot of answers in that question. Here's your next query. This is in the world of romantic comedies, or as the term I coined, rom-coms. Here we go. Adam Sandler and Emily Watson play romantic interest in what 2002 romantic comedy? Excuse me, dramedy. Apparently it's a dramedy this movie. What 2008 um, romantic comedy starred your two favorite leads? Ooh. Schmoes, no. Mark Ellis and Christian Roth. Five, huh. four, Perfect. three, two, one. Pens down, please. Pens down, please. And we start with uh, Paulo Yama. My masterpiece, Punch Drunk Love. Yes, Roca. Absolutely, Punch Drunk Love. Lon Harris. I also have Punch Drunk Love. And Dan Merle. Put me down for Punch Drunk Love. We are tied at four as we get to our next question. Question three, dramas. Which actor co-stars with Robert Redford as reporter Carl Bernstein in the 1976 film All the President's Men? The battle so far. Yes. That flick better than Punch Drunk Love. Is that I a hot uh, Yes, it is. Yes. And Close. five, Close. four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, please. And we start with John Roca. Dustin Hoffman, son. Yes, Lon Harris. Dustin Hoffman. Dan Merle. Dustin Hoffman. Paul Oyama. Can I just get a coffee? Dustin Hoffman. Yes, sir. It is now 6-6 six, six as we get to question number four, Marcus Elias. Yeah, Christian, that is in the world of the 1990s. These are 90s movies, and for a point, the question. 
What 1990s spoof comedy had a sequel with the subtitle Part De? The name of the 1990s spoof comedy. Christian, you hear the outlaw say he's in the twilight of his career? That was it. Five. He's been saying that for three years. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, please. And we start with Lon Harris on this one. Film is Hot Shots. Yes. Uh, Dangerous Dan Merle. I think the exclamation point should be required, but it's Hot Shots. <laughs> yes. And Paul Oyama. Agreed. Hot Shots. And John Roca. Hot Shots. Yes. Okay. Oh, no exclamation point. Ooh. Uh, eight, 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 eight. All right. Here's Ooh. our next. Uh, here's our next question here, Mark. As we get to question number five, fantasy sci-fi is our category. Christopher Columbus directed Adam Sandler in what 2015 film? I mean, you'd figure that year gives them the context, but I think I, I think he goes by Chris Columbus. I I did. I know. Okay. I was whatever. Okay. Okay. And I, it doesn't matter anymore. All right. Ooh, I don't know if I know this one. Shh. Shoot. Use All your right. exclamation points. And five, uh, four, three, two, damn, damn. one. Pens down, please. And Dan Merle. Is it Pixels? It is. All right. Uh, Paul Oyama. You're not feeling any Roca. Pixels. Uh, John Roca. Nah, it's Pixels. And Lon Harris. I messed this one up. I put bedtime stories. Oh, so first blood is drawn there by the founding fathers as we are see ourselves here 10 9 as Lon Harris misses that particular one. And we get to our next question here, Mark. That's right. Christian says first blood and somewhere Gucci just woke up. <laughs> Number six in the question realm is in the world of comedies. <laughs> Thank you. Not there. Who plays jewel thief Miles Logan? who hides a diamond in a building that would become a police station in the 1999 film Blue Streak. Christian, give me your best fake laugh. <laughs> Anthony Fazio's legend Five, is safely intact. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Well done, Mark. And we start with Paul Oyama. Martin Lawrence. Yes, John Roca. Martin Lawrence. Lon Harris. Martin Lawrence. Dan Merle. Martin Lawrence. Look at this, 12-11. Founding Fathers haven't missed yet, and Paul Yama working with the perfect one, oh, and Lon Harris only missed once. As we get to our next question here, our next question in the realm of horror slash thriller. Gosh. Horror slash thriller. Frank Marshall directed Jeff Daniels and John Goodman in what 1990 dark comedic horror film? Uh, Christian, do you think those are pillows behind lawn, or do you think that's some sort of uh, formerly alive carbon-based life form? I, I was informed com. that that would not be asked during this match. That Five, is in my rider. <laughs> four, three, my rider. Two, Repeat one. the question. All right, here it is. Uh, first one. That's from Paul Oyama. Excuse me. Frank Marshall directed Jeff Daniels and John Goodman in what 1990 dark comedic horror film? First one by Final Exam. The only writer in Schmodown history that I know of is Christian Harloff. He needs two things. He needs a suit pressed, he needs a bowl of M&Ms. Five, no brown ones. four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up. Pens down, hands up. We start with John Roken. I'm going to guess arachnophobia. Yes, sir. That is correct. Okay. Uh, Paul Oyama. No, sorry, sorry. Lon Harris. Arachnophobia. Yes. Dan Merle. Arachnophobia. And Paul Oyama. Arachnophobia. There you go. All right, Mark. Look at all these perfect rounds we got, Christian. So here's where we stand, folks. Lon Harris having a nice round number one, but he is not within reach of a perfect round. However, he is still participating in question eight. The other three competitors have a chance, if they answer this question correct, to have a bonus question asked because they will have a perfect round. Not there yet. Here we go in the category of animated movies. Movies drawn by hand on a computer, some stop motion, thanks to Hamilton Pens. Here we go. Hmm. Who voices Gru in the Despicable Me franchise? And to quote that movie, Christian, it's so fluffy. So very fluffy. Oh, thank you. 
five, four, three, two, one. Pens down, hands up, and Dan Merle. Steve Carell. Yes, Paul Oyama. Steve Carell. Fuzzy Camera Roca. <laughs> Steve Carell. Yes, and Lon Harris. I also have Steve Carell. Well, look at that. So, Paul Oyama, John Roca, Dan Merle, all three former singles champions, well, excuse me, and the current singles champion, all had a perfect round. And we will give you all a bonus question, Lon. You can sit this one out here. And so this is for Dan, Paul, and John. I'm going to do it the same way that you did before. Here is the question. All right. What 1980s horror film has this tagline? If Nancy doesn't wake up screaming, she won't wake up at all. Woo, that sounds intense. Uh, Super producer Courtney just reminded me of this. Um, A minion basketball. Oh, I love that. Despicable Me, I wanted it universal. You got to make three out of five shots. I like that one. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, Paul Yama. A Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes, John Roca. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes, and Dan. A Nightmare on Elm Street. All right, so we now see ourselves here. 1816. 1816, Founding Fathers able to go up by two points here because of that double perfect round, but the former champ, Paul Yama, hanging tough as well. And now we are going to get to round number two. Mark, how's it go? Round number two, where the question value doubles. Well, what? If that's what you want. So it's oh. the wheel around the wheel of fate, doom, and justice. Once that wheel is spun and a goes to completion, you're going to have six questions. Yes, six questions because it is the team format. Each question is worth two points in that particular genre. There is no penalty for missing a question. However, stealing. Yep, that's available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, just ask us multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. At that point, that the question goes down to a mere one point. Teams may confer amongst their members for each and every question asked in round two. We well, say, well, Mark, but if they're talking, maybe that gives the other team some insight. Into, we figured that out already. So whatever team is not currently answering questions, they go to a whole different stream. It's like a different realm. They're walking through the Narnia painting, and they will be invited back only after the set of questions is asked. If there are any steal opportunities, they will then be presented with those from either Christian or myself. So Christian, now we have a big decision to make for founding fathers. They enjoy a two point perfect lead over final exam. So John, Dan, would you like to spin first or would you like to defer well, to your opponents? Well, they'll have, they'll have 60 seconds to decide that with uh, both uh, Gucci in just a moment here as we remove the uh, team uh, final exam. All right, Gucci, you got 60 seconds to talk to the Founding Fathers now to decide. Here we go. Well, we like the wheel. I can't hear you, Gucci. Tom, you're, you're, you're uh, muted again. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. How about now? There All we right, go. We're good. There you go. We're in. Let's do it. Dan? Okay, yeah. My new mic. I got a Sony mic. I just got it. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dan, we uh, talked about this ahead of time. So what do yeah. we say here? I'm thinking, look, first of all, great round, guys. Thank our back against the wall. We're going to come out swinging. There's no question Thank about you. that. Uh, we have all three of our things. I mean, the wheels, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't love the wheel. Um, let's let's do what, what we said we're going to do. You know, yeah. let's rock it out. Yeah. Let's yeah. I mean, off. John, do we want to stick with with our plan? And we uh, like we. I we still like feel good about it. Do you still feel I good feel about good it? About it. Yeah, let's do I it. I think we're gonna. You want to break from our usual yes. tradition a little bit here? Yeah. We are gonna spin first. You're gonna go first. All right. Yeah. So then we're gonna ask. Uh, well, first of all, final exam can stick around and see what you spin, and then yeah. after that, they will have to go into the other room. Winston will will stay um, and be able to watch. All right. So let's get that wheel up, if you can, please. Here's the wheel. All right, and the first spin. Here it is. Come on, wheel. What an inspirational speech by Gucci, Christian. I'd be ready to run through a brick wall for that guy. I know. You know. Oh, uh, look at. Oh, and it might be. Oh, oh, movie quotes. So 60 seconds nah. to decide if you want movie quotes starting. I don't know, Dan. Look, I, I don't know if I'm good at those. What do you think? I mean, I, I feel all right about it, but I know you're down on it, and I know yeah. Gucci's down on it, so yeah. I, I don't I don't mind trying it again. Okay. All right, so here's the second spin. Let's see what happens. And here it is. 
So the founding fathers have to stick with whatever they get here, and then finally they will jump out. And Come here on, is wheel. the spin. And we it's find ourselves. And it is oh, on Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Oh. Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. Right. It's going to be on Eddie Murphy movies. All right. So we're going to have finals to jump out. Winston, just make sure your hands are up during this round, if you please. Um, and we will now drop Gucci out. Yep. And we will have six questions in the realm of Eddie Murphy movies. Mark, when, as soon as we get the word... We are all good already. Look at that. So I'm a big fan of final exam. They jumped right hey. into that room. Big fan of that. All right. I'm very right. impressed with Juan. So Dan and John, are you guys ready? Yeah. Ready? All right. Do here it. it is. What classic comedy was the first feature film debut of Eddie Murphy? I think it's Beverly Hills Cup. 48 uh, hours, right? 48 hours, right, 48 hours, right yep. John? Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. 48 hours, final answer. Correct for two points. Yep. All right. Who directed Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor in the film Harlem Nights? I think it's Eddie. Uh, I, for some, I know that they were directed by Sidney Poitier in a film, but I don't know if it was Harlem Nights. Uh, you want to go five. multiple choice? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Let's Three. go to multiple choice. All right. Is it A, Walter Hill, B, Tony Scott, C, Eddie Murphy, D, Martin Brest? I think it's Eddie. Okay. I go with you, Jim. Final answer, Eddie Murphy. Correct, for one point. Yeah. Should have trusted my gut. Nope, sure. nope. It's all right. Should have trusted my gut. All right. Martin Brest directed Eddie Murphy in what 1984 comedy where he's right. investigating his friend's murder in California? Yeah, Beverly That's Hills Cop. Beverly Hills Cop, yeah. Yeah, Beverly Hills Cop, final answer. Two more points. Which actress stars as special agent Rachel Wright, who gets placed under arrest by Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson's character in I Spy. Ooh. This one, I don't know. You know, you have any inkling, John? I think it's Salma Hayek, but I'm willing to go multiple choice. I mean, I didn't trust your gut on the last one and uh, and you knew it, so I'll leave this call up to you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I don't 100% know as much Four. as I knew the formula. So we'll go uh, multiple choice. All right, multiple choice. Is it A, Halle Berry, B, Rachel Weisz, C, Regina King, D, Famke Jensen. Oh, I'm glad I didn't go that route. Um, do you have a guess here? Shoot. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it. shoot. Rats. Can we hear the choices the again? Yeah. You can hear the choices once, yes, and it won't okay. cost you anything. Here it is. A, Halle Berry. B, Rachel Weiss. C, Regina King. D, Famke Jensen. I don't know. You, you want to guess like Regina King? Sure. All right, fine. We'll go Regina King. That is incorrect. Ah, all right. incorrect. All right. So we're going to, that'll be a steal opportunity for final exam. Damn. A bad day. That's all right. Okay. Here is the next question. Here's the next question. Eddie Murphy has received one Oscar nomination for which film? Dream Girls, right, John? Mm hmm. Yeah. Dream Girls. Final answer. Two more points. All right. So that was question number five. four, five. Excuse me. It was question five. Here is question six. Here it is. All right. Which actor plays Phil Ryerson, who is one of three men who run a daycare known as Daddy Daycare in the film Daddy Daycare? Well, there's two because it's yeah. Steve Zahn and it's Jeff Garland. Yeah, are the two, and I don't know which is which. So <laughs> five. <laughs> I don't either. Four. Just pick Three, one, man. Two. Steve Zahn. Final answer. That is incorrect. Oh. All right. All right. So Should have gotten was... a multiple, John. I'm sorry. That's all right. No, no. All right. So that was it. That was it. There. Damn. Uh, tough round. And so. That's not good. Yeah. Some all right. That's not good. Proverbial bone. All right. Okay. So. That is the round there for the Founding Fathers. So we're going to drop you guys out. And now we're going to bring back the, excuse me, final exam. 
in just a minute. And here we go. So, guys, there are steal opportunities on the table, so you won't be able to talk to your manager just yet. Okay. But we also are going to allow the Founding Fathers to stick around and watch the steal opportunities. The first one is a multiple choice opportunity. Okay. And here it is. Which actress stars as special agent Rachel Wright, who gets placed under arrest by Eddie Murphy and Owen Wilson's character in I Spy? Is it A, Halle Berry, B, Rachel Weisz, C, Regina King, D, Famke Jensen? The Founding Fathers chose C, Regina King. I'm in the dark I, on this. I feel like it's Famke Jensen. I mean, I'm not I'm going to trust you on that. But if that's, that's your gut, let's that's go. That's my Fam gut. Famke Jensen, final answer. That's correct for one point. Ooh, good point. All right, this, the following is a two-point steal opportunity. Which actor plays Phil Ryerson, who is one of three men who run a daycare known as Daddy Daycare in the film Daddy Daycare? Uh, wait, wait, their answer they, was? They show, their answer was uh, Steve Zahn. Uh, I believe it's Jeff Garland's character is yes. the other one. Jeff Garland, final answer. For two points, that is correct. Two points, big steals there for final exam as they see themselves now. 25-19, two big steal opportunities that they took and got. And now the wheel, excuse me, now Winston Marshall will come in and we'll have 60 seconds to talk to Winston starting now. Cool, I mean, first of all, I'm look, look at Paul picking up what Lon's been doing all season. Lon has been doing nothing but just stealing things. Like that has become his personality. That was phenomenal, gentlemen. You guys and I was can't sitting... prove anything. None of it. No evidence for any of it. Where's hey, the evidence? Hey, well done. Uh, be, especially from the standpoint of we know who we're dealing with here. So every point counts here. So that was everything's huge against these guys. 100%. Exactly. So that's absolutely phenomenal. So let's keep our cool. We already talked about what we're doing with the, the wheel. So let's make it happen. Yep. All right. So now the wheel goes up. And now the spin is in. Here it is. First spin on the board by final exam as they took a big three-point steal from uh, the Founding Fathers. And Spinner's Joy still working out there, Christian. It's careening towards. And it's the movie quotes. You really want someone to do movie quotes, don't you? <laughs> like, Jesus. I'm, think I'm thinking Darren McFadden. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing with that, man. Like, you know, Run DMC was good, but he wasn't good on the Cowboys, so we're going to spin again. Spin that again. All right, here's the next one. Wow. Did not Rocking expect a code. Darren McFadden reference today. A lot of code talking their second round. If that's that's new. Named Arkansas running back, Darren McFadden. He was good for like half a season for us because, you know, Jerry Jones willed it with his demon magic. Great in college. And Christian, it's how about this? Spinner's choice. I was looking for some Emmett Smith. Let's go! Spinner's choice. All right, what, what is the choice here? 60 seconds to decide. So for this, I'm thinking uh, C.D. Lamb. I'm thinking okay. football reference or possibly basketball <laughs> reference. Copy that. So it sounds like you guys want to do Hepburn. Did I read yes. that correctly? All right, yes, then that's yes, what sir. we're doing. Yes. That's All right, Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn. All right, so we're going to drop TJTs. Out. Don't forget. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to drop out uh, the Founding Fathers, please, into the separate room. And we will have uh, Gucci standing by. Where is Gucci, by the way? There he is. So Gucci, hands up, please. And we are going to get, Mark, six questions in the realm. We're going to remove Winston. And we're going to get six questions in the realm of Audrey Hepburn Films. All right, so now the manager, Winston Marshall, has been removed, and final exam is here. Are you guys ready? Yes, ready. sir. Here we go. All right, Audrey Hepburn is the category. Their code was Emmett Smith, who's the closest thing the Cowboys have ever seen to John Riggins. Here's your two-point question, gentlemen. Reminder, multiple choices out there should you need it. What actor stars as Pierre Bezukov opposite Audrey in War and Peace? This is Henry Fonda. I believe you are correct. Henry Fonda, final answer. Nanu Nanu for two points. Henry Fonda is correct. Two points. To another question, the world of Audrey Hepburn. Gentlemen, which 1980s film tells the story of three private detectives investigating two beautiful women for infidelity? This is the Peter Bogdanovich film, They All Laughed. Long. Correct, yes. They All Laughed, final answer. <laughs> yes, they did. For two more points. 
And Christian, this team is feeling it in round number two. They certainly are. And call, me, they call me on this one. Got some points. They got some points here as it is now. They have a chance to tie it up with this next one. That's right. Paul and Taco featuring time permitting Lon Harris. In which Audrey Hepburn yeah. film does her character attend the Cordon Bleu in Paris? This is in Sabrina. She goes to cooking school. Oh, you're right. Yes, that is. Yes, you're right. You're right. For the cracking egg. Yeah. Sabrina, final answer. Yeah. Another correct answer for Lon Harris's team, Christian. <laughs> all, all of myself. All of myself. All right. Here it is. Fourth yeah. question. And this can give them some points. Here we are. Including her win, Audrey Hepburn received how many total Oscar nominations all in the category of Best Actress? Lon, it's five. <laughs> 100% confident. Five, I, I, I five times. Final answer. All right. Going to need the name of all those movies. To, no, we don't need the name. <laughs> we could do it. If you want. <laughs> I, please, please. It's fine. We trust you. Five is the Mac correct and answer. And Christian, yeah. they're smoking through this round. Here's another, what I we think is a fastball for Audrey Hepburn. In Funny Face, Audrey Hepburn's character works at what type of establishment before a fashion photographer discovers her? It's a bookstore. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. That was going to be my that's guess. That's where they but... meet her. They have a photo shoot in the bookstore. So it's that's... she works at a, a bookstore. Final answer. That is correct for two points. <laughs> wow. Is that six? That is five, Chris. Wow. One more. They wow. are smoking through Last... Audrey Hepburn. You'd... You, you, you would think it's six just because they're just rattling off everyone. Let's see if they can get this last one for two. I love points. Audrey Hepburn. What can I say? It is now 29-25. So if they are able to hit this here without a miss, this is a big lead to go into the third round with. That's right. Let's see if they can get it. In the world of Audrey Hepburn, composer John Williams, credited under the name Johnny Williams, did the music for what 1966 Audrey Hepburn film? 1966. Oh, okay. So uh, I might have to go to multiple just because I'm like years on this one. I'm not 100% sure. I yeah. keep thinking of ones that are 64 Five. or 67. Let's go to Four. multiple choice. Go to multiple, yeah. Multiple choice. Four options worth a point if you get the correct one. Is it A, wait until dark? Is it B, Paris when it sizzles? Is it C, how to steal a million? Or is it D, two for the road? It's how to steal a million. Those yeah. are all. It's sixty-seven, sixty. I was going to say how to steal a million. Or well. yeah, it's how definitely to not two for the road. I believe yeah. it is. It is how to steal a million. How to steal a million. Final answer. They've stolen a few points, and now that answer is correct as well. So Christian, look at this. No steal opportunities <laughs> left on the table. Thirty to Jeez. twenty-five is the lead that founding fathers that finds them trailing by final exam going into round number three. That's a big, big uh, round there as we now get to our, and we're going to bring back the champions, the former champions, excuse me, no steal opportunities here, gentlemen, as we now see the score 30 to 25, final exam, five point lead with the Ooh, what'd you, final What'd you go multiple choice on? What'd you go multiple choice on, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> How dare you, sir? No, it was, it was absolutely fair. Absolutely fair. I believe it was the star of I Spy. I think that's one we went. Oh! No, 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 I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, I need that one. All right, let's 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 bring in the. So we now we now bring in we now bring the managers back, and we see ourselves here. Five points. He broke and tried to cope with the fire, but the fire was ready for him. All right, five points, and now we are going to get into round number three and the rules. Mark, how's it go? That's right. Christian, the run. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> uh, round Chaos. number three are as follows. This is the round that will determine the match, unless we go to sudden death overtime, which don't worry, we are prepared for. In round number three, each team is going to give us three numbers. These numbers may range from one to 20. Why the numbers? Well, because each one corresponds to a different category that is unique to movie trivia showdown gold. Your first category is worth two points. Your next one's worth three points. The final one features a question worth five of the biggest points of your tournament. Now, this is the team format. So once we announce the genre of the two-point question, the team will have to decide which member is going to field that one solo. Yes, you must answer it solo without the help of your teammate. That teammate will then have to answer the three-point question again solo without your contribution. You may only confer with your teammate for the final five-point 
question. Christian, it's a big lead for final exam going into this round, and so they have the luxury of giving us their three lucky numbers first. Fortunately, Emmett Smith was number 22, so we don't <clears> hear <throat> that name anymore. All right, final exam. Rats! Uh, Paula uh, carried us to date, so why don't you do the numbers this time? I appreciate you letting me do some of the work. Uh, 7, 15, and 12. <laughs> 17, 15, and 12. No, no, no. Seven, 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 15, and 12, and four founding fathers. John, you go first. Eight. Uh, one. And what's the last one? Our last one? Seven, what's 15, the, and 12. What's the last number you can pick? Oh, highest number. 20. 20. 20. All right, so there it is. All right, because Let's go. Swag, you're in the lead here. You got 60 seconds to talk to your competitors. Winston, sorry, now. Yeah, uh, first of all, let's go. That's just, let's get that right out the gate. Uh, second of all, you got your two JTEs, so it is what it is. Uh, let's, we need to go into this, guys, because we got to understand what we're dealing with. They're going to hit their two, they're going to hit their five, it's going to be on us to hit, or they're going to hit their two, they're going to hit their three, it's going to be on us to hit the two, and then they're going to hit go to that five pointer, and that's going to decide what this match is really about, all right? Yes, sir. So, it comes with down to that, that, it comes down to that. So, with that in mind, keep your head on. Keep your, 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 your butthole tight. And then let's just go in here and do what we do. And then uh, other than that, you know, uh, I'm excited to, you know, walk on to the next round and see what happens. But it's not it's not a done deal because it's these two. So no, let's, let's do I'm not doing. even talking about that. We're still in the cage. We gotta, oh, yeah. We we're still in the fight. cage match. We're still in the cage match. I, I, as uh, a matter of fact, I just said that. I probably pissed seconds. Roka off. Eight Nine seconds. seconds. That's fine. Roka, I'm sorry. I love you, buddy. All right. I and, our all right. So that's it. And now we get to uh, Gucci. You got sixty seconds starting now. I mean, look. You know, they got they got what they needed there, and that's what happened. There's nothing really we could do about it. Five down. Let's get this two three. Let's get them to their five. That's the only thing we can do here. I mean, uh, like I said, backs against the wall. Come out swinging. That's what we got to do. Yep. All right. That's it. So thank you, Gucci. Thank you to Winston. And we start with the founding fathers. Gentlemen, are you ready for your two pointer? Let's do it. Mm -hmm. All right. First one, you guys chose category eight. That is in the category of Will Smith for the two. Who's going to take? Ooh. What do you say there, uh, Dan? I'm comfortable taking it or waiting until the three. How you feel uh, about Will Smith? Oh. Uh, um. Need an answer and. Yeah, I'll do it. All right. Here it is, Roka. All right. Roka, who plays Albert Brenneman? who is smitten with a client of his invested firm in Hitch. Kevin James. Correct for two points. All right. That is two points on the board there. Now to tie it for you get category one, Dan, that is three pointer. And that is in the category of dance films. Dance films. All right. Dan, are you ready? Sure. Let's do it, right. Danny. Here is the three pointer. Who plays the character of Derek Reynolds, who decides to help Sarah develop her dancing skills in Save the Last Dance? We got our repeats. Remember that. And five, four, three, two. Repeat, please. All right. Here it is. First one. Who plays the character of Derek Reynolds, who decides to help Sarah develop her dancing skills in Save the Last Dance? And five, four, three, two. Uh, Mackay Pfeiffer. One. Looking for Sean Patrick Thomas. Oof, wow. So I wouldn't have gotten right, that. But either way, we would have missed that, brother. Sorry. All right. So here we are. Five points on the line here for the Founding Fathers. If they hit it, if they hit it, then it bounces back to final exam. However, if they miss, final exam will win via TKO and advance to the finals. All right. Number 20. That is the category of 80s movies all right 80s movies all right here it is in the film young guns who plays benevolent ranch owner john tunstall 
who hires the young gunmen from the road in order to civilize them. Terrence Stamp. Dan? You good with that? you, man. Terrence Stamp. Is that your final answer? Terrence Stamp, final answer. That is correct for That's five right. points. All right. Stays go, alive. All right. Good so pull, final, John. Good pull. But however, final exam now, Mark, is in a very good position. They just need their two to tie it and their three to win it. So a lot of right. pressure. A lot of pressure, guys. All right. Here it is. All right. Gentlemen, uh, coming up a hot young guns question. Your next query and your first query in round number three is in the category of earmuffs, Christian. All right. Horror movies. For two points, Paul, think, Ron, Ron, who wants to? I think either of us can take this. How are you feeling about it? I'll, I'll take it. I got to redeem myself in this category. Okay. Sounds good. You got this. All right. All right. Ron is going to take the horror movie question for two I points am. to pull even with the founding fathers, two legends of the game. Who plays Steve Freeling, a man whose family is being haunted by malicious spirits in 1982's Poltergeist? Uh, that would be Craig T. Nelson. All right, so it's a tie it game now. So now, final exam, Paul Oyama can win the game here. If he hits this three-pointer, he gets a opportunity to do so and move to the odd couple in the finals. However, if he misses, then it's a five-pointer to see if we're going to go into sudden death or if they can win it. That's right, Christian. Uh, they selected seven, 15 and 12? Yes. They, they chose, yes. They went yeah. out of order. To try to confuse us, but it didn't this work. That's how we do it. And now we've landed on your category for your three point question to be fielded just by Paul Primetime Oyama Oscar movies. Mm. Movies of some import during one of those ceremonies. And Paul, here's your question for the win to advance to the finals of the tournament to take on the odd couple. Holly Hunter was nominated for two Oscars for films released in 1993. One was The Piano. What was the other? The Firm. And you're the winners! And to the next round! Final! the upset and beats the founding fathers what a moment here for final exam that winston let's start with you not only do you advance to the finals here and get your chance into one more potential title match you basically just knocked the uh the finstock exchange they're out of it as far as winning the faction championship and they were the all-time favorites to win this thing so how do you feel now that you have one more opportunity you guys are still very much into this and an opportunity here for yet another title match. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I'm just really petty. This has nothing <laughs> to do with the Finstock Exchange. This, I know for Paul, there was a little bit in there for losing to Roca uh, earlier this season off of what was, Roca pulled some crazy stuff in that one. But I don't know if anybody remembers this first live event that I ever played in where I happened to be on a team called Wait, I Know This. And essentially Dan and John didn't even use me as a stepping stone. They, I was this tiny little puddle that they just happened to not even skip over. They just took a very tiny little step over. So I won't lie. I was trying to stuff all the trash talk because I do genuinely love these gentlemen. And I know if you talk too much trash to Roke, it pisses him off and he actually does better. I was honestly in this match, not for the tournament finals, not for the faction. I was in it just because they embarrassed me at my first live event. <laughs> Hey, you got the Shrek question right in that match. I Never got that forget. Shrek question. It was Never Robin forget. Hood, son. Oh. Robin Hood, oh, Rob from the rich. Oh, but steal for the poor. We're talking about redemption there, Paul. You know, look, this is a... Uh... This is your second victory over Dan, obviously. One in singles, one now in, in teams. And then you got that redemption there against John Roca. But this is this is big for you because not only is this a victory for Swag, you know, you were the only rookie, youngest uh, one at the time to win the singles championship, obviously. And now you still have an opportunity in your sophomore year to win the team's championship. So how are you feeling right now going into this finals against uh, the odd couple? Well, I want to thank three people. That's Bendini, Lambert, and Locke. Shout out to those guys creating the titular firm in the firm. Um, 
I just, I feel really good. I feel like I, I came to play today and that's really what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this, you know, for, for Winston, for Lon, for our team and for our opponents. I think they deserve nothing but our absolute best game. Um, I think we, we got pretty close to that and I'm super excited to move on to the next round. I honestly kind of can't believe it. Yeah, Lon, um, first of all, it's clearly not a pillows or a weather experiment uh, under the <laughs> covers behind you. Um, when it comes to I round see. number two, you really seem to put Paul on your back and carry him through yes. those tough Audrey Hepburn questions. Does that maybe get you back on your own personal path to redemption and, and cleaning your life up as you head into the finals of the tournament? I mean, look, they thankfully there are a lot of stacks at the Academy Library on La Cienega, and it goes pretty far back. And if you get around the corner of one of those, nobody can see you. So it's a great place to just hole up, kind of put, you know, like a, a thermos, maybe a little pad there. And, you know, while you're crashing and hanging out doing whatever, no questions asked, uh, you know, maybe you grab a, a copy of Wait uh, Till Dark or maybe you you know, check out uh, Roman Holiday or My Fair Lady as long as you're there. Well, you know, this is something, to, by the way, and this is Lon Harris's second uh, team's finals that he will be in. Um, and, Paul, I do want to go back to you for a moment also because it seems like you have quite a you In your young career, there's a lot of feuds that you have and a lot of matches you've had. You're going to have another one here against Jeff Snyder once again. You guys have split in singles, and now you both – Jeff Snyder is one of, if not the greatest teams player we've ever seen. So going into that, and I'll flip it to Winston after because of his feud, obviously, with their manager, Roxy Stryer. But let's talk about Jeff Snyder and Mark Andreco, two legends once again. So how do you prepare going into this five-rounder against the Odd Couple? Well, the thing is, I'm not playing Jeff Snyder. I'm playing the Odd Couple, and that's like a whole different entity in my head. Um, you know, I, I love facing down against Jeff. It's going to be fun to play Mark for the first time. But really, it's about them as a unit and us as a unit and us having to just be a little bit better than them. And all we can do is come, come prepared. Um, we can you have the ingredients and we'll see if the, the recipe cup turns up. Uh, and, correct me if I'm wrong, yes. the Harris brothers did take on Mark Andreco and Jeff Snyder once, right? I don't You did memory, you did win, yes. With, my with memory's not Jonathan what it used to be, but how did that how did that play out? You're absolutely right. You did beat the odd couple in oh, that tournament that oh, year before the right. odd couple won the championship. You're absolutely right. And that's oh, one of the finals. Lovely. Yeah, you did. And now, Winston, you have handed Roxy an L before. She's handled, he's handed you one before. So how now, Roxy? What Roxy has been doing, and what the rock stars have been doing, is that they have been putting out the fire to a lot of these factions that keep moving up. They've been, they don't, they can't win the faction championship, but they can put some dampers in your plan. So how do you go into a match with the Odd Couple and Roxy Stryer? Well, there's a couple things. The first thing is, is right now, is the Swag Revenge Tour. We're pretty much taking out anybody that wronged us before we got into this. Uh, again, Roka handed us a very difficult L to Paul early on in the season. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy that we could avenge that. Uh, secondly, you know, Shannon, I'm looking at her coming into, uh, you know, the spectacular. You know, Chance took out my boy Paul in Inner Geekdom. So I'm looking for Chanju to handle that. Uh, so Roxy, I do have a little revenge to get on her. Uh, and I'm more than happy for Paul to get it right here. And then we'll turn around and get get it another one in there for her when when Ace takes that belt from Alex, and it's just going to be a nonstop train of just revenge till this is over. And this is also his revenge for people that they were hot on us at the start. They were they were you know they didn't care about us. Then they started to love us, and then all of a sudden we have been like we don't exist. That all it is is Adam Collins and the corruption and Shannon. All right, so I'm gonna tell y'all right now, my fire is back. All right, my fire is right here. And I've got my boys back. I got my girls back. We are going to ride on y'all suckers. So All right. Go. Well, congratulations to Swag. Congratulations, uh, obviously, the final exam. Gentlemen, we'll see you in the tournament very soon. One step closer to the Schmodown Spectacular. Thank you very much. Going to remove final exam and Swag. Now, we are going to bring in the former champions, Dangerous Dan Merle, John Roca, and their manager. John, I got to start with you, man. Yeah. Um, this this is just seems to be the the overall the, the way that this season has gone so far yeah. for you. You play a good game, you're having a great game, and it just you know it just the cards weren't in your in your favor. Now, no, no, this is uh, all me, and uh, Dan deserves no uh, disrespect for this. This is me. I didn't trust my gut on Eddie Murphy. I love Eddie Murphy. I knew he directed Harlem Lights. I questioned myself when he said Sidney Poitier. That's on me. Famke Jansen, I felt it was a white woman, but then Regina King, I remember Regina pops up in interesting places, so I just went with Regina, and then uh, uh, at the end, I put the I put it on Dan, and I shouldn't have done that, 
And, uh, you know, I should have just said Jeff Garland. I knew Jeff Garland was in the movie. Uh, Ralph or Fred or Phil, whatever his name is, that sounds like a big dude's name. So it would have been smarter for me to just go Jeff Garland. So this has nothing to do with that. This is all me. And I'm going to be kicking myself in the butt for quite some time. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's super frustrating because you play a good first round. You get into that second round. You start questioning yourself instead of being loose and uh, being playful and uh I didn't prep Eddie Murphy in time, uh, or else I'd have been way more confident, as you saw in the cat last time we played a team's match against, against well, last time we went against Corruption, and I didn't feel that same confidence this time around, and uh, I screwed my friend Dan in that second round by throwing that last question to him, and I shouldn't have done that. I should have just took the hit. And sometimes I get scared in those moments, and I toss it to my friend who I believe knows more than I do, and it, and it, 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 it him, and I, and I'm oh, sorry, screws him, and I apologize for that uh, profusely to my teammate and to the Finstock Exchange, and, uh, Guys, I don't even know if you want me uh, next year because I've had some tough, tough losses this year and some questionable moments. And uh, it's frustrating. It's frustrating because I know the answers. I just don't trust my gut like I used to before. Uh, and that's been uh, damaging me in the games and damaging uh, our partnership and our team So uh, and our faction. So I uh, apologize and take full responsibility for this loss uh, uh, no, today. I don't, mm. I don't agree with that whatsoever. No. Was not your fault? Well, the let only, me. The only fault it is is the pandemic's fault. <laughs> well, derailed our whole squad that's the facts well let me throw this to you dan because like yeah. as you said obviously the plans didn't go the way that that you guys wanted it to and and you know opponent's choice that can uh, that can that can sink the best of the teams and obviously that happened that happened today and you guys didn't get the questions you want paul well, spinner's, and, choice, spinner's choice yeah. excuse me spinner's choice. Yeah. uh spinner's choice and paul oyama and lon just uh they played incredible so you know they were they were on the top of their game here but let me let me ask you this, because of what John said, obviously, I know that the bond that you guys have and I know how well you guys and the friendship that you have. But um, so let me ask you, what is the what does the future hold in store, do you think, for uh, for the founding fathers and the Finstock Exchange? Now, I, I know you have a spectacular coming up and you and, and Dagnine will be in there. But how, how are you feeling right now? Uh, I almost said a bad word. Uh, crappy. Um, yeah. Listen, I know how John. Uh, reacts to losses and and uh, but you know I think if you if you if you if you bring a neutral party and you look at the analysis of the game and who played like a champion and who didn't in both of our matches this year um, you're gonna find that John came, comes out on top both times I just didn't uh, uh, I had as bad a year in teams this year as I had in singles uh, as, as good a year I had in singles um, I love playing with John obviously I love being champions with John I love this run with John I'd love to stay with John um there's uh, you know we have this whole new process of free agency but you know i also have to honestly look at the exchange um points wise just the way the system is set up i'm kind of a liability for my faction this year mm -hmm. every time I, I retained a championship i saw potential points come off the board because that's another tournament i couldn't enter that's another slew of opportunities i didn't have to play and so I wouldn't also blame Gucci, you know, if, you, if this is about winning points, you know, I mean, I'm very proud of the season I had, but I also know that the season that I had was not conducive to scoring a lot of points for my faction because I sat on the sidelines for a lot of the season. So I understand if Gucci wants to look at the fact that having a sitting champion and I'm very lucky to be that. And if I'm lucky enough to be that next year, hey, it's great for me, but it ain't so great for the people I'm in a faction. Well, it will be next year, Dan, actually. Out of the game. You make well. You make a point uh, next year that that will be different, and points for championship matches and number one contender matches and, and value points will change, and so that will. And we be retroactively good. apply them to this. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. This this year, no, but next so. next year, next year championships and defenses will be worth will be worth more. So I, that that concern was definitely heard as this was a, a new process for the whole schmodown in general. Yeah, but yeah. um, but you know, Gucci, you know, coming off of that here, uh, this is you guys were the overall favorites to win this whole thing with this particular loss here you know you still have dan who can pick up five more points in mm -hmm. the uh in the spectacular uh, against sure. the win against adam collins but this is also the first spectacular that john roca will not be playing so yeah. how do you you know how do you how do you pick it up how do you go into the championship match and what do you do to re do you redesign do you try to pack up you know with all the drama with with bateman what do you do here i mean look first and foremost you know say something to these guys when uh you know, you're standing next to history. You should be gladly be part of it. And, uh, you know, me managing these guys standing next to history, I was gladly part of it. Um, I couldn't ask for better guys to manage. They're fantastic. Like I said, things didn't go our way, um, unfortunately. 
These guys are the best guys I've ever managed. No question about it. Smart, dedicated, fundamentally sound, best competitors I, I, I know. That's for sure. I mean, you know, the guy gets the fake mustache guy gets, uh, you know, Audrey Hepburn. And next thing you know, they win. Um, there's nothing really you can do about it. Um, the Finstock Exchange, yes. I mean, obviously, it's been turmoil the whole year. Uh, no one's going to deny that. Um, but like I said, we got stripped of our personality, you know, by not being in live events and stage things. That's my honest opinion, because when we come in 10 deep to stages and, and studios and things like that, we always win, always. And that's what everybody thought was going to happen. And you know what? It, it, it probably should have, but it didn't. I mean, those guys and much respect to Winston and, uh, you know, Coy and Shannon, I won't be anywhere near manager of the year. Um, hopefully, you know, we could at least uh, salvage something with Dan and the Spectacular, take home a belt, uh, make it look okay. You know what I mean? We'll sh at least shine one trophy. Um, we got a lot of bad luck this year, that was, that, and just like anybody else in 2020, uh, you know, unfortunately. And it's, uh, like I said, I don't really sugarcoat anything unless there's big money involved. Uh, we just we just didn't we just didn't win. We didn't win. Fair that was it. Fair. Fair enough. And Dan, I got to ask you this too, too, because obviously, you know, I know how bad you wanted. I know how you play. And I know that you not only did you want to get back to the championship, but you wanted to get John to the spectacular. But it is you going into the spectacular now. You will be headlining your first spectacular since spectacular one. Mm -hmm. So is that where the focus lies now? Is it defending against this uh, phenom in, in Adam Collins? And, and because either even I got your point as before, you felt like you maybe you were holding back, but you are indeed the focus of your faction right now. You can end, as Gucci said, with the champion championship with your third defense which no one's ever done in a single reign so is that is that is that the goal right now and, and just kind of push forward yeah of course it is i mean listen i i read what people write i read what the fans are saying i'd say probably 60 percent of them have written written me out of the 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 belt picture already uh probably after this game that's going to go up to 75 percent i've seen people talk about oh he's unstoppable nobody can ever beat him blah 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 yeah you know that was said about another competitor and that was me and I'm pretty sure that the guy on my team uh, put an end to that. Um, he was a veteran of the game. There's the hot young rookie phenom coming in on an unbeaten streak, and he took the belt off of him. Uh, and so there's no streak that is unstoppable. And I would have loved to have played with John in the spectacular. That was my goal. I'm pissed off that we didn't hit that goal. But that just makes me more motivated to make the best of what I do have. And if people think that I'm going to come into the Collins match distracted or or uh, still down about this game. I am already, I was already in the process of preparing and I will now be going even deeper into the pro process of preparing harder for this game. And I don't mean a little bit harder. I mean a lot harder for this game than anyone that I have ever played because I don't care who's got the belt or who's not. I know who people think is gonna win this and I wanna prove them wrong. Dangerous Dan Merle, champion of the world. And John, let's get the last word here, man. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll go here. This is something uh, that I'm probably the same thing I'm gonna, that I asked Dan before. But like you said, yeah. I know you how you get down on yourself after a loss. Um, the exchange. You had your gripes in the beginning. Uh, yeah. It, it seemed like it, it, things kind of patched up. Yeah. Where are we going to see you with the exchange next year? Are we going to see the founding fathers exchanges? You need an off season to figure it out. What, what's going to happen, brother? I said this from the beginning that like uh, when these off season start talk or this next season's talk started, it's just like everyone just assumes you know uh, Tom's going to take us, but Tom is a smart manager. Maybe Tom has you know some ulterior things going on, and I respect that because I got no issue with that. This isn't show friends, it's show business. And uh, business, his business is winning titles and uh, winning championships and winning faction, uh, you know, winning see, man, winning manager of the year, basically. And I didn't hold up my end of the deal by getting us points and getting us victories. Uh, twice now, I blew opportunities to face uh, my friends in the ring, wanted to face uh, Dan for the belt and wanted to face Jeff uh, uh, in the finalist tournament, Jeff Snyder, who I, oh God, God, I'm so mad. I owe a whooping to, and I just, I blew it. And so uh, I don't, I think Tom's got to do his own thinking and in that moment decide for himself if he even wants us back to be uh, his team uh, next year. And Dan and I have to have conversations about whether 
we should stay together as a team overall. I love playing with Dan. I know he loves playing with me. But in the end, you know, it's like, well, we're not getting these victories that we need to get in critical moments. And maybe we need to take a look at ourselves and either, either spend a lot more time studying together or, uh, you know, just figure out what we're going to do next. Because uh, my heart breaks that I can't be at Spectacular. Christian, you know that. Um, and I've got to do some soul searching as well and decide if maybe, and this is no offense to Tom, maybe I need another manager. You know how it is in relationships. Sometimes it looks like it could work and then you try it out. It's not the right fit. And you got to find something that is the right fit and no hard feelings between the two. So it's just, we'll see what happens and uh, I'll take some time to think about it and I'll do some more studying and prepare for next year. It sucks now to not be able to have another match. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I take this one hard uh, and I'll bounce back, but I take this one hard because it's another lesson yet again to trust my gut and just take chances and live with those rather than playing it safe. And, you know, it's just more lessons for me to learn that I keep learning that's too frustrating. Uh, and uh, maybe I'm wound too tight in some of these matches and it shows. So, uh, but I appreciate the opportunity. And let me say one last thing. Honestly, uh, there is no reign of Adam Collins. Winning matches is not a reign. It doesn't mean a damn thing. A prince can get as far as he wants to get, but a prince doesn't reign. A king reigns. And Dan is the king. So Schmo down backstage, you can kiss my old outlaw butt, say in the reign of Adam Collins. He hasn't ruled anybody. He's just won a tournament. People win tournaments all the time. They don't always win the title. All right? My brother is ready now, even more so, to take Adam Collins on. So Dime Store, breed Jesus. You go find your John the Baptist, your Mary Magdalene, your Mother Mary. Bring them all against Dan Merle. It's not going to matter. Okay? Because he's not a king. Dan is a god. And Jesus was the son of God. And below him. So there's your answer, Adam Collins. So there's no reign till you beat God. And he is a trivia god, Dan Merle. And until you do that... I don't want to hear anything about the reign of Adam Collins. He's a young rookie, and he's won a few matches. Big deal. Go get a title, son. Then you'll get respect. John Roca saying it there. And then Gucci, thank you. Dan, we'll see you in the spectacular. Gucci, see you in the spectacular. John, once again, as always, my man, thank you for thank everything you. you do for the league. Great match here, guys, and we will see you next time. All right, so I am going to close this out. Mark Ellis had a little bit of a technical issue, and that's okay. Because I'll be here to tell you guys thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for the Founding Fathers. Thank you for Final Exam for joining us. And congratulations to Swag and Final Exam for getting it done here today against the Founding Fathers. Now, the other thing to remember, the Schmodown Spectacular is right around the corner. Listen to this lineup. That is right. In December, ladies and gentlemen, this is the six big event here it is six big matches the big event and it starts off with the star wars championship the reigning champion alex the demon demon defends his championship against the star wars tournament winner play-in match himself andres ace cabrera from swag in our second match chris jericho returns to the schmodown arena and he battles from Glow, that's right, Brittany Young. It is the Dungeon versus the Rockstars. That is going to be a match where Le Champion makes his return to the Schmodown Arena. The team's championship will be on the line when the reigning champions, Shazam, William the Beast, Bibiani, the kid, Brendan Meyer, will defend against either the odd couple, Jeff Snyder, Mark Andreco, or the winners of today's match, Primetime, Paul Oyama, or Lon Harris. One of those two teams will be facing the champions. And then the Inner Geekdom Championship. Swag defends. It is Chandru the Chosen, the reigning movie trivia showdown. Inner Geekdom Champion defends against Corruptions, the Cobra. Chance Ellison, the winner of the Inner Geekdom Tournament. That happens, and it's not over yet because Kevin Smith, that's right, that Kevin Smith, he is going to try to stay undefeated as he goes against another undefeated opponent in Brett Sheridan, the sniper, that's right. And finally, for the movie trivia showdown championship of the world, the reigning champion, the GOAT, the four-time movie trivia showdown champion, Dangerous Dan Merle, goes to defend his championship for an unprecedented third time in one reign as he defends against the Phenom, undefeated Adam the Coyote Collins, who won this big tournament. Again, another play-in competitor. 
this guy, can he be beat? He's only, we know he lost in the teams. Can he be beat in singles? Well, if he's going to go undefeated, he's got to take on the best that ever played. What a spectacular it is, and it all goes down in just a little bit from now. Thank you, guys, for joining us. Make sure you go to the schmodownlive.com. You get tickets or $10 patrons. They're going to get that event. You don't want to miss this one because it's going to come out a little bit afterward. You want to watch it live with everyone else. So go ahead and check it out. It's our last one. Then the free agency starts. Then the awards come. All this stuff happens. It's going to be pretty nuts. So thank you for joining us. Thank you to Skybound. Thank you to everybody. Thank you for joining us. And congratulations to Swag and Final Exam. We'll see you next time.